Good afternoon, all. A um, few years ago, uh, the urban people living in the world just tipped over 50 over 50 percent. So now more people in the future will live in urban areas, and that has got implications in terms of uh, water, food production, and sustainability and livability. And water in urban areas has many different interests. So it could be river. We, every city will have some sort of river and which maintains life around cities. Uh, playing fields are important because th th that keeps us healthy. And uh, we need water around our homes to keep greener. And also, it provides a cooling effect. And we need to produce some food. And if we look at Australia, uh, one fourth of the total agricultural production comes from around the cities. And so it's very important in terms of food security. And that's the case for other places as well. So what are we faced with? Increasing population. And land use is changing because we are changing from agricultural land to urban areas. And there is climate change happening. And so three big questions we are faced with. Will we have enough water in the future for different needs, including the environment? The second question is, if not, what options do we have? And the third important question is, Will those options work sustainably and deliver the goods? So these are the questions we are faced with. And that's a question of our survival, our future, even civilization. So every city has got uh, uh, urban area and outside mixed land use. So urban, uh, some houses, agricultural land, and some natural lands and other things. And as the cities expand, and so is the peri-urban areas. And so this is a very transient state. And what is happening through this is uh, we are bringing very productive land from uh, to the uh, urban areas. And that has implications in terms of uh, water cycle, food production, and overall livability of urban areas. So this is an example, Jordan Springs uh, in Sydney, one of the areas in Sydney. This is what it was looked like in 2002. And this is what it looks like. Now we go to Africa, Kampala in 2002. And this is what has changed. So what does this mean? We're changing the whole land use, biodiversity, the water cycle, and so on. So, but uh, urbanization, we need to, people are moving from rural areas to urban areas because of various reasons. And so it's unstoppable. We can't do, I think people want to move and there's no other way. But what is, what is it doing? Changing hydrology of the area. So more hard surfaces, more storm water, more west water, and so on. And we are also losing fertile land, which can produce vegetables, fruits, and some other food material. And also it is increased water demand. So these are the questions we are faced with. Now, what has happened in the past? How we got to what, where we are now? So in, if you look back pre-1950s, the focus was on production. So as, use as much water as you want and bring land into cultivation and so on. So the focus was production, produce more, use more. Then came 1970s, productivity. How can we produce more per unit of land or per unit of water you, you, we use. And then we realize we can't improve much 
we got to a point. Then came the sustainability, maintaining the use. So in 2000s or something like that, uh, we wanted to make sure that we can keep going with the, what we are doing in terms of use of land and water. And now we got to a point of security, food security, water security. Will we have enough to, in, to meet the demands of population, the demands of the local environment, and so on? So this is the, how we got there. So what is important? The partnership. If we want to, uh, the technical solution won't work. We need to work with people, start with people, and develop solutions, develop the dialogue, and come up with something which will work. And that requires new thinking, doing ways of, different ways of doing things. So uh, we need to work, uh, what was mentioned this morning, trust disciplinary research. You, you start, put the people in the center, and you work different people from different disciplines work together to improve livelihood or improve water situation or food situation, but not go with the solution and this is what will work. And that hasn't worked and now it's very complex and it will not work. And research can help, so we need to work with stakeholders, communities, and we need to have them on the problem and also on the solution together. So, in the end, I want to say delivering short-term economic benefits of water is usually relatively easy. Delivering long-term and ecologically sustainable development for the benefit of future generation is the real challenge we are faced, whether it's Australia or Africa or Asia. Thank you very much. <laughs>